Right now in the nation's capital, six members of the House, six members of the Senate, half Democrats, half Republicans, are working to come up with a plan to cut $1.5 trillion from the national debt over the next 10 years. If they can come to an agreement, important social programs will likely be cut. We need to know what's at risk and what we can do to influence the outcome. Here to discuss this are two top policy experts, Dr. Maya Rockimore, President and CEO of Global Policy Solutions, and Dr. Julie Ajinkia from the progressive think tank, the Center for American Progress. Julie, that's right. I got it right there? Yeah. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Just making sure. <laughs> All right, Dr. Rockimore, you said that uh, we face the potential of social anarchy, if you will, based upon these cuts. What do you mean by that? Well, what they're coming up with is a plan to cut anything from uh, the the defense budget uh, to all of the social programs and the entitlement programs that are important to our communities. But when you're talking about cutting uh, programs like food aid, cutting Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, you're talking about social anarchy to Mm -hmm. the extent that people don't have the income support or the food security or the health security that they need to even make a living and survive in this country. And so this is serious business. Rolling. Now, look, we face an issue where we have a mm-hmm. tremendous deficit, some $14 trillion. Obviously, we must get that under control. Uh, and so what is the give and take here? Because clearly something has to be cut. Where do we start? Because everybody says, don't cut my stuff. I mean, I think you're exactly right. I think what we have to remember is that a budget is about choices, and it's about the priorities that we make. And we have to decide if, as a country, we want to prioritize tax cuts for millionaires or our shared growth and prosperity as an entire nation. So on one hand, you know, we see that the priorities right now are in crisis in Congress. We have conservatives on one hand trying to cut, um, you know, aid for that would help families heat their homes in the winter. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, we have the same conservatives trying to maintain you know, over $4 billion in tax breaks for the oil and gas industry. You know, so when we have direct comparisons like this, I think we really have to figure out what are our priorities and what is going to provide us with this sort of security for all of our Now, of course, one of the things that President Barack Obama uh, tried to give in terms of a concession to the Republicans during the whole debt ceiling crisis was raising the Social Security age. Uh, How will that impact African Americans, Hispanics, uh, Latinos? How will that impact them going from... 65 to 67. So, first of all, people need to realize that it's already going up from 65 to 67. Okay. The changes that were made in 1982 actually are anybody born after six, uh, any, anybody that was born after 1960 is already experiencing an increase in the retirement age. Uh, it will be 67 shortly. Okay. Uh, that's a 13% benefit cut. They're talking about raising it from 67 to 70. Now, this has problems for African Americans, for Native Americans, people who have shorter life expectancies. Uh, and so that means means that we're seeing a transfer of social security wealth from people who live shorter lives to people who live longer lives, and this has racial implications. People who have shorter life expectancies, like African Americans, Native Americans, people who work in hard labor jobs, uh, won't be able to take full benefit of the retirement benefits because they're raising the retirement age. Now, while this may save social security money, this harms people of color. Now, Social Security is the one issue everybody wants to latch on to, where you hear Republicans and Democrats say, oh, we can achieve cost savings there. And so how do we have a realistic conversation about uh, about the deficit, about getting our debt under control when everybody is saying that's the area to attack? But I got to tell you, they have misframed this because Social Security has not contributed one cent to the national deficit or debt. Uh, Social Security is actually operating in surplus right now, and it will until the year 2036. After that time, it'll experience basically a 25 cent on every dollar shortfall. Social Security has not contributed to the debt problem, and it's problematic that we're discussing it in the context of the debt. There's another uh, agenda going on here, Roland, that is actually not good for America. It's part of the problem here that, frankly, uh, you have Tea Party exerting their influence Uh, keeping conservatives, keeping Republicans in line. But frankly, you do not have the same level of intensity of those individuals who will be impacted by these likely cuts, stepping up, making their voices known. 
Well, I think we're starting to see that intensity. And I think what we're seeing with the Occupy Wall Street movement, the 99% movement, is that people are frustrated. They're frustrated that, you know, the priorities in Congress right now and a lot of conservatives in Congress are trying to keep these sorts of tax breaks for millionaires at the expense of, you know, communities of color, low-income folks, people who are, frankly, the most vulnerable. And, you know, we have to remember that in the reason we have a deficit is because of the incredibly high unemployment employment in our country. And, you know, that's why we have to get back to job creation, because without the revenue coming in from taxes, frankly, from more jobs, that's why the government is in this deficit. What? Actually, the reason why we have a deficit is because of two unfunded wars abroad that the Bush administration uh, put out there uh, without paying for it. Uh, a, uh, they uh, implemented a uh, prescription drug benefit in Medicare that was expensive and yet we couldn't afford it uh, and it wasn't paid for. Uh, and so we had a number of policy decisions that were made by the Bush administration right. that put us in this position that we're in today. Well, I'll tell you what, there's been massive spending on, on both sides, Republicans and Democrats. Clearly people know that debt is an issue, but there's no doubt lobbyists are, lo lobbyists are lined up trying to protect their special favors with this select committee. So we'll be examining what they do. We certainly appreciate it. Thanks a so bunch.